Hello, Assalamualaikum. I welcome you all to another lecture on electrical machines. We were discussing about the single phase transformers and after that we discussed a very special kind of a single winding transformer which is known as an auto transformer. Now because of this some shortage of time, I am skipping the video lecture recording for a three phase transformer. Maybe we will, uh, maybe I will cover it up at some later stage uh, in the form of short videos. Right now I am moving to the topics of electrical machines. So let us start with the electrical machines and in that particular aspect we will start with the introduction of and working of a DC machines. So let us start. Electrical machines are the devices which convert electrical uh, you know energy into mechanical energy or they convert the mechanical energy into an electrical energy. Now this conversion is based on two devices that have the same principle, they have the same construction, they work in contrast with each other. And we call the devices which are used to convert electrical to mechanical we call it the motor and the devices that convert the mechanical form into an electrical form that is known as the that is known as the generator. Electrical machines have various types uh, that we have covered in the lecture one of this electrical machines video series. So we have the DC machines, we have the AC machines. So for this particular you know module two, we will only cover the basics of the DC machines only. So let us start with the DC machine and see how a DC machine actually works. And thereafter we will, as we will process, we will proceed. We will uh, discuss different types of the DC machines their equivalent circuits and their torque speed characteristics that may that distinguish uh, one type of a DC machine with another type of a DC machine. So <clears throat> I am I'm starting right now the DC motor. Now to understand the DC motor, we will revert back to the chapter number one of the textbook which is Electrical Machine Fundamentals by Chapman. In that chapter number one, we skipped a few parts uh, that were pertaining to the understanding of electrical machines. So let us uh, move back and see why, uh, how those concepts are important and how do, uh, understanding those concepts will help us in grabbing the basic and basic principle and working of, of a practical DC machine. So in this, uh, so in this context, two important things uh, we need to understand. The first thing is how a magnetic field interacts with with a moving conductor and the number two thing is how a magnetic field interacts with a with a current carrying conductor. So these two things uh, we will try to first analyze and then we will fit it onto a DC motor to see how a motor actually works. So the first thing is this interaction of magnetic field with a conductor with only a conductor yeah with a, with a sorry with a moving conductor so the first thing let us say that we have that we have we have a sliding surface let us call this ideal sliding surface that has two rails and because it is an ideal sur sliding surface which means that they do not have any friction or any resistance to this particular conductor which is supposedly which will slide over, over, this, over this surface. We also assume that we have, we have a uniform magnetic field all along this particular conductor that is placed on, on the sliding surface. This cross sign shows that the magnetic fields are actually coming from the top in, and they are entering into this particular page, which means that if we have, for example, if, if, we, if we just try to draw a three, uh, you know, a th sort of a 3, 3D diagram, we can see, for example, if this is the, if this is the floor, if, if this is the floor somewhere, so you can see here that we have the we have the north pole above, above 
and we have the south pole on the on the below surface so if we, we have you know we have this type of a this type of a scheme right so in this particular scheme this upper hand this is actually the north pole and this this particular this hand this is actually a south pole where this south pole is actually right now the page so the magnetic lines which are directed from the north to the south they are actually coming into this particular in this particular page and for these magnetic lines we use a symbol which is this cross sign uh, encircled uh, in, uh, with, with, with an encircled cross sign right so we have a magnetic field uh, of cross nature which shows that we have the top surface is the is the north pole and we have a south pole on the on the bottom surface in between that we have these we have these sliding you know rails here let me let us bold it a little bit so we have we have the sliding surface available and then we have a conductor which is placed over these two rails so so for example if these are uh, these are the two rails then we have this particular conductor placed over it and it is free to move over these two sliding surfaces under the influence of a magnetic field which is coming from this north pole and it is entering uh, to the to the south pole which is which is uh, in this particular page so we have the interaction of magnetic field uh, such that we have these rails available this is the this is the conductor and we have and we have these particular you know uh, these ends they are actually open so we assume that the magnetic field intensity because of these two magnets which are uh, placed uh, in this particular you know example so we have b is actually the magnetic field intensity and it is and it is uniform which means that the magnetic field intensity has a uniform value all over this this cubical surface we cannot say that this magnetic field is intense uh, in the center of the pole and it weakens as we move on the edges of the pole so this is another assumption that we are making right now that this b is a magnetic field intensity which is uniform over the entire you know arena and we have the rails which are actually frictionless so if for some instance if we if we push this particular conductor in a, in a direction let us say that we direct it on uh, from this from the left to the right right so if i if i push it on uh, on this ideal sliding surface then this conductor will interact with this with this particular magnetic field what will happen since we have the magnetic lines which are coming from the north to the south this particular conductor will cut those magnetic lines and as a result we experience an induced emf in the conductor ends suppose that this that emf is actually measured here somewhere and let us say this is e induced according to the uh, according to the theory this e induced is equal to v into b dot l with this l is the length of the conductor this is the dot product this is the cross product pro cross product this v represents the velocity with which this particular conductor is actually moving from left side to the right side so v is the velocity it is not the voltage and this velocity is in meter meter per second this b is what it is the magnetic field intensity and this l l represents the length of the length of the conductor which is placed uh, here uh, let me elaborate it with this with this highlighted part this is the whole length of the conductor which is sliding over a uh, over a set of rails so now that we have uh, seen that we uh, will experience an induced emf across the terminals of this particular rail we are also interested in knowing that what is the polarity of this induced voltage here do we have a positive here or we have a positive sign somewhere here right because the polarity of the induced emf is important to understand for this particular uh, you know concept so for that we have the right hand rule right so these there are two laws which is the first is the right hand rule another one is the left hand rule we will uh, we will see both of them how they are useful in in determining the induced emf direction of the induced emf or the positive polarity terminal of the induced emf the rule is very simple we will use these three fingers these 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 three particular fingers so this is the thumb we have this index finger index finger and this is the 
uh, this one is the actually the uh, middle finger. So each one of them we have to place it such that they comes in uh, perpendicular with each other. So here we can you can see here here you can see here all these particular lines. I'm trying my level best to uh, to identify this particular thing. This this thumb is actually coming at 90 degree with this index finger. If I if I remove it, something like this one, you can just see that this this particular finger, which is this middle finger, now it comes at 90 degree with this particular index finger, and it is also at 90 degree uh, with this particular uh, direction of the thumb. So with this in mind, now we have to designate each uh, each one of them uh, with some specific quantity. So the thumb, this particular thumb, it shows you the direction of the movement over which the uh, uh, the the thumb shows the direction of the movement of the conductor. So if we have actually pushed the uh, conductor from left to right, so this is the uh, this is this should be the direction of the thumb because the conductor is moving from from this position to this position that is left to right. And then we have this uh, this this uh, particular index finger. This index finger points out the uh, the direction of the magnetic field lines. So since because this magnetic field lines are coming from top to the bottom, and we have it something like this one. So if you if you if you see here. It is it is quite a, you know a difficult concept. I will try to elaborate it uh, using some uh, using some graphic here. But you can see here if we have if we have this particular you know uh, index index finger pointing downwards because we have earlier assumed that this surface is the south pole. So we have the magnetic lines coming from the top to the bottom. So this this particular uh, index finger is pointing towards the direction of the magnetic field. Now if I if I rotate it somewhere here. Then we have the direction of the uh, velocity or the movement of the conductor. It is from it is it is shown by the direction of the thumb. The rest of the finger shows that it that this far side of the conductor uh, or the top side of the conductor has a positive induced voltage. So we can say that for this particular aspect, because it is moving from left to right, so this is the thumb direction, right? This these magnetic lines are from top to bottom so this is the this is the middle finger and this one this positive side is then calculated by the by the index by the index finger right so sorry this index finger uh, sorry 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 uh, you just made the mistake okay so here we have the index finger is showing you the direction of the magnetic field direction of b and it is shown by the index finger and this one is shown by the by the middle finger. So we have a positive voltage induced here with respect to the negative terminal, which is which is this uh, bottom side of this particular conductor. So this thing gives us a very important concept. That is, if we have a conductor which moves in the presence of a uh, of a magnetic field, then the velocity of that particular conductor with the cross product with the with the magnetic field intensity B having a dot product with the length of the conductor will give us the induced emf across that particular uh, bar of a conductor and this is the basis of a this is the basis of a dc generator so let us say let us do an example suppose that we have suppose that we have we have a conductor here right we have a conductor here We have a connector here, and this connector has a length L. Again, let us say that we have the direction of the magnetic field is pointing from the top to the bottom uh, in this particular direction. So uh, this is equal to 0 0.5 Tesla, and we say that this conductor is actually moving on some frictionless surface at a velocity equals to 0 0.5 meter per second. So what is the total induced EMF? across these two ends if i connect a voltmeter here what is the what is the induced emf so for that uh, we will use this particular expression this e induced is equal to velocity into uh, the magnetic field intensity in dot product with the with the length so that is equal to <coughs> vb sin 90 degree into length cosine of theta degree and because this theta is zero, because this the length of the, the 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 length is in the direction of the magnetic field, so this theta is equal to zero. So we have this equals to V B L, and that is equal to and and that is equal to five meter per second into 
uh, if this length is equal to it is equal to 1 meter then we have this equals to 0 0.5 tesla into 1 meter and that gives me 2.5 volt so 2.5 volt uh, will be the reading of the of this particular you know uh, volt meter so <clears throat> this is the first thing that uh, we need to understand right now what we want we want to see that if this particular conductor is stationary it is at rest and instead of pushing it on this uh, ideal sliding surface what happen if we provide it a current if we provide it an electrical current using some dc power supply some battery or maybe some other source so that's what we need to understand uh, understand now and this is this point number 2 that how a magnetic field interacts with the current carrying conductor so let us examine this uh, point number 2 uh, to strengthen the basics of an electrical machines suppose that we have uh, suppose that we have uh, we have again we have these two this is the this is the sliding surface these both of them are sliding surface and here we have we have a battery here uh, just for uh, to prevail the sanity let us connect a resistance here and then we have we have this uh, particular you know uh, switch which is connected here and then we have we have this circuit closed this vb and here we have the we here we have this particular conductor i and this conductor is actually solidly connected with this particular you know sliding surface so there is no insulation between the sliding surface and this particular conductor so when we when i turn on this particular switch let me turn on this switch uh, now this switch is closed at t equal to 0 what happens that we have that we have a current flow uh, in here through this particular conductor which will which will complete its path now this current when it when it moves through uh, moves through this particular uh, conductor and this conductor is actually placed in a uniform magnetic field again i will show uh, with some uh, you know few uh, symbols that this uh, magnetic field intensity is coming from the top into this particular page so we have this particular uh, we have this x here uh, this sign is shown and if the magnetic field intensity is coming out of the page something in this particular direction uh, we use we use this particular symbol okay out of the page and this one is and this cross is the into the page so these are the two uh, things that you might encounter while studying your uh, textbook on electrical machines so now that we have this particular magnetic field intensity available we have the current available what happens now you see as soon as we have the we have the current flowing here this conductor will experience some force and that force f is equal to i f is equal to i l into b where this i is the current which is flowing through this conductor this l is again it's the length of the of the conductor and this b represents the magnetic magnetic field magnetic field intensity now again uh, synonymous to that of the uh, of the previous uh, you know discussion where we use the right hand rule to identify the polarity of the induced emf which is induced as a result of a moving conductor in a constant or a uniform magnetic field here what i am interested is in knowing that we do have a force which is exerted on the conductor but what is the direction of that force is it pushing it from this direction from left to right or is it pushing it from right right to left we need to understand this very important you know concept because it will it will strengthen uh, the basics of how a conductor moves in the presence of the permanent magnets or in the in the in the presence of any magnetic field so to understand that we will use the uh, the flamings right hand left hand rules this is the flamings left hand rule this left hand rule is again based on using your thumb of your left you know left hand the index finger of your left left hand and the middle finger of the left hand both of them will be placed exactly in the same uh, fashion as we did for uh, the right hand rule but here uh, we have uh, some similarities and we have some dissimilarities for example this thumb will uh, will point towards the direction of the of the force this index finger will show us the direction of the magnetic field is it into the page 
originate out to out of the page and this particular uh, middle finger will represent the flow of current into this particular conductor so in here if you see we have this uh, we have this particular conductor which is lying here so this uh, side if if this is if this is the particular conductor here then we have uh, then we have the uh, current which is flowing from this tip towards this particular tip so we have the current flowing from this side to this side and also we have the uh, this um, this index finger this shows the it shows the direction of the magnetic field line so because we have earlier assumed that on the top of the surface we have the north pole and here we have the south pole so basically this index finger is pointing downwards uh, whereas this particular this middle finger is it, it is actually giving me the direction of the current which is entering from this side of the conductor and it is leaving from this side of the conductor so here we have this particular uh, thing available and this now the direction of the thumb is actually telling me that the direction of the force which is exerted on this particular conductor lying in a constant magnetic field is actually the force is pushing it from this side to to this particular side so if we see here the direction of the current is such that we have this is the direction of the current right this direction of the current is given by the by the middle finger right this is the index finger and if you if you do a little bit of you know the same this particular principle then this is the direction of the force which is induced on this particular uh, on this particular conductor so we have understood two things number one if the conductor is stationary and a current is is you know passed through that particular conductor and we have a uniform magnetic field then the conductor will experience a force that will try to push it from one side to uh, to some other direction and that direction is uh, can be easily calculated by using the fleming's left hand rule the other thing is if the conductor is already moving if the conductor is already moving and it, we have that conductor already placed inside a constant magnetic field then an induced emf will uh, will occur across that across the terminals of the rail uh, which uh, direction of the which can be easily obtained by using the right hand rule so based on these two things we will process the case further to understand the basics of the electrical machines now suppose that we have uh, for this particular uh, system let us say these are again the, these are the two rails or the sliding surface over which the uh, over which this particular conductor is actually sliding and we have we have a conductor here let us say that we have uh, we have this this arrangement here right now because it's a closed path this conductor is initially at rest so uh, let me draw some some switch here let us say that we have a switch here that t equal to 0 uh, this is vdc or we can say that we are using a battery here so let us uh, be consistent with the with the textbooks so this is vb this is the conductor and this is some resistance r so initially when this conductor is at rest then we do not have any induced emf right so at rest we have e induced equal to 0 why because e induced is equal to v v to l if this v equal to 0 because it's at rest we do not have any velocity then this e induced is equal to 0 so we do not have any induced emf here so what happens when we turn on this particular switch at t equal to 0 at this t equal to 0 the amount of current which flows in this particular loop is i equals to vb over or this is r right so as soon as we have the as soon as we have this uh, current flowing through this inductor then it will experience some force that force will will push it in this particular direction right so as uh, it pushes this particular conductor this conductor will move as it moves we get some value of this v consequently what happen that eventually we get some induced voltage across uh, this particular conductor we'll try to limit this amount of current so at after some time uh, not at t equal to 0 at let us say at t is equal to uh, 0 plus uh, we have the current i equals to vb minus e induced divided by divided by this resistance r where this resistance r may be uh, may re used to represent the winding resistance of, of of this particular you know conductor but right now we since we have assumed that a lot of things are actually ideal so this resistance 
could be any resistance that is used just to limit the uh, inrush current flowing from this battery into this conductor. So, with this in mind, let us see that what happens afterwards. So, we have this induced EMF. So, since the initial inrush current is very high, so it will it will get a push here and the current will flow until we have this E induced becomes equal to this VB. When this E induced becomes equal to this VB, then I become equal to 0 and because it is a frictionless surface, so this conductor will, will move uh, forever at that constant speed. Uh, so, so this is what, what happens in, uh, in, in a particular electrical machines that once the machine reaches its steady state value, then this induced EMF is becomes equal to the uh, applied voltage which is in this case is this VB and consequently we have the current equal to 0. But before that, <coughs> but before that let us see that the that what is the velocity at the steady state condition when the motor reaches the steady state what is the velocity of the of the DC motor there. Now, since we know that this uh, that at the steady state at steady state the velocity uh, at the steady state the sorry at the steady state we have the <coughs> we have the VB equals to the equals to the induced EMF and what is this induced EMF? This induced EMF is equal to V V into, into this M, right. So, we can say that the that the velocity, this velocity V at this particular condition, this is SS where SS stands for the steady state, uh, you know, condition. So, this V S S is equal to V battery divided by divided by B V into L. So, a conductor moves at this no load speed uh, forever unless some external force something like you know like friction disturbs it and thereafter it will uh, it will uh, its speed will disturb. If nothing happens then for an ideal uh, system ideal sliding surface system where the conductor is actually moving at this state it will always uh, continue to uh, to move uh, steady state velocity. So, once we so what we can see here that if I plot the the waveforms here then we have the uh, this one uh, let us say this is the V t which is the which is the velocity. So, the velocity will have a first order you know circuit response something like this one. Uh, we may uh, you know you may see it in different textbooks that it is a derivation that why this response is actually a first order response. So, just consider that this we have this first order response where this one is the velocity at the steady state condition. The second thing here is that we have the E induced here. Now, this E induced will also have this type of a curve because once we have this E induced equals to this battery voltage VB. At that particular time, we will reach this uh, steady state uh, velocity of, of this particular conductor. And also, we have uh, the third part, which is the uh, which which is the it is the IT. Now, you can see here that IT will not uh, start from this zero, because looking onto this particular diagram, uh, at t equal to zero, I is equal to VB over R. So, whatever is the resistance, uh, it will try to limit uh, the amount of uh, current that is that flows when we turn on this switch at t equal to 0. So, uh, instead of having starting it from this 0, uh, we shall have some initial value of this of this current i that is equal to V b over r and after that it will it will have uh, you know this type of shape and eventually uh, at this particular point where we are reaching the steady state condition, the, here we are getting the steady state condition, this becomes equal to this becomes equal to 0. Okay. And, and after that we also have the <coughs> we also have the f induced here. Now, this F induced, what is this F induced? F induced is the fourth which is induced onto the particular conductor. So, that F induced is equal to, uh, what is the value of this F induced? F induced is equal to I L B, right. So, we do have the magnetic field at the start t equal to 0. We do have the uh, length of the conductor, of course, uh, the, the conductor has some length. And when we start the motor, we have the current I which is equal to VB over R. So, it will have the same sort of a shape just like this particular current that it will it will come to uh, this this position and equal to 0. So, this is equal to this is the induced EMF that is uh, equal to V B L B over R. So, instead of writing this I since because we know that this I is equal to is equal to V B over R at T equal to 0. So, we just plug that I in, in here and that becomes equal to V B over R L B and this is what is written here. So, uh, at the initial time at t equal to 0, this is t equal to 0, we require some finite time for the motor to reach its steady state value. Now, because this particular motor we have seen 
that we do have the uh, we do have some interesting you know claims for this motor this motor is not uh, tested on a real load so let us assume that we put some load on the motor the motor is uh, because we are discussing the electrical motor so that means that the load should be mechanical in nature that mechanical load will try to reduce its speed right so uh, what happened here is that we have the that this particular conductor is actually moving right so we have this induced emf in this particular direction let me use it use uh, another ink here so we have this particular conductor right and we have the same you know same system here we have a switch here and that is developed with this particular thing here so th this is this is what we have so we have a force here this is the induced force and then we apply a mechanical load on the conductor now that load will try to weaken the uh, it will try to weaken the net force which this particular conductor is experiencing so let us say that we have a force which is this f load and it is applied on an opposite direction as that of the induced force so what will happen that the net force which this particular conductor is actually experienced f net actually weakens and that is equal to f load minus the f f induced so what will happen when when this uh, when when we put a load on the on the electrical machines so what happened here is that uh, this load will try to reduce the speed of the motor right and it definitely will have an effect on the on the motor speed the motor has a steady state no load speed we apply a mechanical load on the on the motor that actually reduces the net force that particular conductor is experiencing and that force net force will reduce the velocity of the motor and consequently what will happen what happen here is that this velocity of the motor will reduce this e induced load and thereby when this e induced becomes less than this vb then we have some sort of a uh, some sort of current that flows uh, through the motor and that is the at uh, this particular current from the right so the current will the more current will flow uh, because of the uh, because this induced emf is not decreased so that will try to compensate the speed of the motor nevertheless the motor will actually have a some it, it will actually accelerate at some speed which is lower than the uh, than the speed of the motor at no load so we have this vb this this also becomes little bit less than this vb so consequently we have some some current i here and some uh, induced uh, uh, you know force in this particular uh, you know direction so what happens when uh, after some time in a practical scenario what happen is that uh, because of this we have some current i available here and that current i will uh, will produce uh, will exert force on the on the motor trying to catch up with this particular you know applied load and consequently uh, we again we have, have an oscillating behavior across the steady state value so we have sort of an oscillating behavior here so in a summary if we say in us in a summary if we say that how a motor works the first thing is we have the f load is applied right let us apply the apply the load here number 2 with this f load applied the f net is reduced right so the net force is not reduced so number 3 what happened that v velocity is reduced this velocity reduction will what it will do it will reduce the induced emf in the uh, in the electrical machines so with this induced emf reduced the current i is is increased right so what will happen when the i will increase uh, then the f induced will will increase and that f induced uh, will eventually become equal to it will try to uh, it will always try to uh, to become equal to the to the load in order to have uh, in order to compensate that load if it is not able to if the motor is not able to uh, withstand this particular applied load then the motor will eventually stop right and that is not actually a good condition because we have to uh, put mechanical load according to the capacity of the electrical machines so if this do not happen uh, that the if if this do not happen that this f induced is not equal to this f load then the motor will will accelerate it will it will not come to a steady state condition and that's actually a dangerous thing because we want to have a steady state acceleration or the velocity of the motor we do not want to have an ever increasing velocity of the motor right so in order to limit it this induced emf plays an important role in limiting the amount of uh, 
uh, or the or the RPM over which a motor actually is able to work. So, this this particular example that we have studied here, this particular example is known as a linear machine, right? So let me write it here. Let me write it here. This is this is actually known as the linear DC machine. Now, this linear DC machine, other than other problems that we have seen, uh, that we will discuss shortly, this linear machine has uh, has a major issue with the inrush current. So suppose that we have uh, we have this linear linear machine here here, and we have here this is the this is the conductor here. So let us say that we uh, have this 250 volt uh, you know supply system, and this with this resistance we connect it here. This resistance let us say it is the resistance of some winding or some you know connections, and that is equal to 0.5 ohm. So we do not have an induced EMF, and this motor is at halt. So, what happens at t equal to 0? At this t equal to 0, this current I will flow and that is equal to that is equal to Vb minus E induced divided by this resistance R. Since we do not have this induced EMF right at the starting of this particular motor, so we require to have something around you know from 500 ampere of current flowing through this particular you know circuit, which is a huge current. And we do not want to have a high huge inrush current flowing into the motor every time we start the motor. So, what is the remedy of uh, you know getting this particular current bringing it this particular current down to some normal value. So, there are certain techniques which are available, but uh, before that you should understand that this particular uh, problem is known as the inrush current problem of inrush current problem of a of a motor. And this particular problem is synonymous to the problem you might have seen in, in your electronics course where we have you know a rectifier system connected with the you know if this is a rectifier system it is connected with the, the capacitor filter C filter right. It is the same problem because here whatever the current I is this I is equal to if this is the VSC, VSC and this is V naught minus V naught divided by R. So, initially if we do not have a voltage uh, stored or accumulated over these capacitor plates, then we have this I equals to V AC over R and because we you do not see a resistance here, so the only resistance is offered by the forward voltage drop which is uh, happening here in the form of 0.7 volt here and a 0.7 volt here. So, we do not have a substantial amount of, of uh, you know voltage which, which can limit the amount of current flowing into these two particular schemes. They are exactly the same. same. So therefore, we can also apply certain techniques which are used to limit the inrush current in a capacitive filter rectifier. We can apply the same principles or the same logic over a linear DC machine which is drawing a hefty amount of or a huge amount of current uh, into its terminal. So what is the first uh, solution that comes in mind that we instead of having you know one resistance here, let us connect our resistance here right. So let me let me just erase this one here and uh, let me just expand this particular diagram. So here we have another uh, resistance here. This is the uh, switch, and this is the 0.5 ohm resistance. So what happened? We have another uh, switch here. Uh, let us say this this switch is something around you know uh, around 4.5 ohm resistance. When we turn on the switch, what will happen? This I is equal to 250 divided by 4.5 plus 0 0.5. That is 250 divided by 5. So this become equal to 50 ampere. So 50 ampere and this 500 ampere, uh, it has uh, you know almost a 10 times less current compared to what we were experiencing before we inserted this 4.5 ohm resistance in series with this uh, particular linear DC machine, right? And this is the same uh, scheme that uh, you might have seen in in this particular you know inrush current problem of uh, of a full wave rectifier. This is what we study in the first course of uh, of electronics. So here. The problem is that now this 4.5 ohm resistance is sitting in series with the with this with this motor uh, throughout the operation, and that is actually a loss. In order to reduce the losses, what we can do, we can add another switch here. We can add another switch here, and that switch can be you know turned on after some time uh, after we avoided this or we surpassed this inrush current you know uh, time uh, limit. So let us say at time t equal to 2 second, we turn this switch particular switch on. Now turning the switch on means that now this 4.5 ohm resistance is now bypassed and therefore uh, the system will continue to work at a higher frequency at sorry at a higher efficiency with this particular resistance that is equal to 0.5 ohm. So this is one solution of 
reducing the inner amount of current right another important uh, you know thing that we can do maybe for very small motors not for a very you know for large power rating motor but for small you know power rating motor what we can do we can use instead of having another switch here because this switch comes uh, with its own you know operating mechanism that may make the system complex in in, in implementation and difficult in uh, in in the execution and troubleshooting phase so what we can do is for th th this is mind is this is only for small motor so what we can do is that we can actually have uh, instead of having a resistance here we can use a thermistor here right so with this particular thermistor of the negative temperature coefficient uh, if when we turn on this you know circuit then because the resistance is cold so its resistance will be high so it will reduce the amount of current but as soon as the current is flowing through that particular resistance it will heat up that uh, that uh, particular uh, thermistor and therefore uh, because of the uh, temperature high temperature its resistance will get low and consequently we do not require to have a separate switch to bypass a resistance so these are some of the solutions uh, that we encounter in a linear dc machine but despite this all this particular fact we have understood two important things and uh, that is the behavior of a current carrying conductor in the presence of a uniform magnetic field and the second thing is the behavior of a conductor moving conductor in the presence of a magnetic field both of them has provided us very useful information about the understanding of a dc machine but right now the problem here is that a dc machine should be something which is enclosed and which have uh, which have which, which can rotate about its own axis we do not have infinite length of the rails available over which we can slide the conductor from one side to another and then back from that particular side to the starting point so we require to have some mechanism that essentially is related to the electrical machines so for that so for that let us alter the uh, this particular arrangement of uh, of a of a linear dc machine so for this uh, let me draw the again the draw the diagram i will try to create uh, you know a real dc machine right right so the dc machine uh, we require to have two poles instead of having uh, uh, an analogy of the roof and the and the floor let us create that these are the two poles now right so this one is the is the north pole this one is the south pole or vice versa whatever it is so let us first of all create let me create the let me create the two poles here these are carved poles we will see uh, later on that why i have made them in in this particular carved shape but let us say that right now we have we have these two poles available and these two poles are uh, you know let me just draw the let me just draw the uh, draw these uh, 3d diagrams here so so we have these so we have these uh, you know right so so this is these are the two poles available so let me say uh, that this one which is this blue one let me let me make it blue right this blue the whole blue is actually a actually one pole right and we have this green one which is this one this is the other pole of of an electrical machines i am not talking about this is this this is making one pair of pole but individually there are two poles so so we have these two poles available right so let us say that this one this is the north pole and this is the this is the south pole so that's actually now understood that we have the magnetic field lines which are flowing in this particular direction right so these are all the this is all the magnetic field lines right which are coming here right so this is the direction of the of the magnetic field lines this is very important to understand uh, if you want to understand the uh, the basics of the uh, dc machine so the direction is from left to right we have the north pole here we have a south pole here next what next what we want we want to actually uh, you know place some conductor inside the magnetic field we have created the magnetic field but we want to have an arrangement uh, something like this one uh, where we have a, uh, uh, a connector available as well so for that let me draw the uh, connector here as well with some maybe some from let's say with this uh, with this red color maybe so we have uh, we have this is this is actually the origin here this is the origin this is the origin o 
which is right now uh, of the center of, of this whole thing. So, for example, if we have this particular, you know, this thermos, if, if, if this side is the, is the North Pole and here we have the South Pole, then we do have some origin here, right. So, that origin is difficult to, to showcase on a 2D surface. So, that's what I am saying that this, there is a center line here, which is actually interacting with a, in this particular, you know, direction. So this is the origin over which we will have the connector that will uh, that will rotate on that particular origin. So uh, with this thing in mind, let us say that we have the we have a connector here. Right? So this is the connector here. It is actually having a length L. Here we have it here. Then it is coming back here, and here we have the two terminals that are coming out. Right. So let us say this is uh, this uh, this is the this is the connector. Here. So, if I elaborate this particular thing here, you can see this is, let us say this is A, this particular point is B, this is C and this is D. Now, because I am teaching, uh, interested in teaching only the DC machines, the DC motors, not the DC generators, but the concept is exactly the same. In a DC machine, we will see the net force that this particular coil is experiencing. In a DC motor generator, we see what is the total induced EMF this particular coil is inducing. But you have already seen that, uh, already you have seen this that the expression for the induced EMF E is it's a simple straight away expression uh, as this uh, induced force uh, expression is. But we will stick only with the, with the DC motor. So let us say that we have that we have an applied voltage here. Of course, let us uh, use. Uh, in order for the sanity to prevail, let us have this particular resistance R here and we connect it in this particular way. Right? So now I have connected, I have connected this uh, particular coil with a DC voltage source which is this VB or the battery voltage source. We have, we have this R over here. So at T equal to 0, let me turn on this particular switch. Now when I turn on the switch, when I turn on the switch, you will see that the current flows in this particular direction, right? This is the direction of the current in this segment AB, right? And then it is it comes out of the segment CD, and therefore this CD has this particular you know direction. Here we have the direction of the current here. So this is it. So we have we have this particular conductor, and this is the direction of the current. So this particular you know index this this shows the this shows the direction of the current. Direction of the current, right? And this O O is the center of origin or origin point, origin line, right? And this blue line, uh, this blue line is the is the conductor. Which is placed in the uh, in the magnetic field, and here we have this these black lines, these black here. This shows the direction of the magnetic field lines, right? Of the magnetic field lines. So now, what happens that we will use the Fleming left hand rule to identify the direction of the force that these two conductors are actually you know of the experiencing. So, for this segment AB, let us write me here for this segment AB, which is this segment, this particular segment A to B, the current which is, so for this particular F induced here, for this particular F induced here, you can see here that the current which is this middle finger, it is pointing, uh, you know, away from from terminal number A to terminal number B, while this particular, you know, this particular uh, is uh, this in index finger shows the direction of the magnetic field lines. So this thumb shows the force which is acting downwards here. So we have a net force which is which is downward here. So we have a net force coming downwards. About this segment CD, now we have this this particular middle finger. This is the current I. This is the magnetic field lines. So it will go upward. It will go upward. So we have an induced EMF which goes upward for the segment CD, while we have a, a force acting downwards uh, for the segment AB. So consequently, what happens that over this origin O, we have a counterclockwise 
movement of this particular coil uh, which is placed inside this these these two poles north and the south pole so this is how it actually twists now as soon as this particular you know uh, this particular coil it actually comes right in the center of the north and the south pole it it it, it, it is something like this one then because of the inertia because it is coming like this one so because of the mechanical inertia it will move it will bend down and ultimately we have this segment ab uh, aligned right in front of the south pole whereas this segment cd comes uh, in front of this particular north pole now once they are in front of that north and south pole we have to reverse the uh, we have to reverse the connections here because the first thing that you will notice if we have a twist in here for example if we have this particular you know set of a conductor now if i if i twist it something somewhere here then what is happening we we will see that this will come here and this will come here so this is one twist here now once we have we have a twist here we don't want to have a twist in the wires as well as we want to have uh, the movement or the flow of the uh, or the revolution direction of the revolution in the same direction we need to we need to actually switch the the polarities here we want to have this particular this particular if this is positive this is negative after this uh, rotation we want to have a positive connected here and a negative connected here so that they always have the same direction but this is not practically possible with this uh, with this particular arrangement for that uh, what we can do we can actually use we can actually use a device which is known as a commutator right we will use a device which is known as a commutator so what is a commutator commutator is actually actually it is actually a ring which is which is sliced you know in half so we have this air gap here let me write it with some different ink just to have more clarity here we have this uh, we have this uh, this cut here we have this cut here these connectors are solidly you know connected with uh, with this particular thing so for example if we have if this is the if this is for example if you consider that this is uh, this is one end of the of the commutator then we have this connector stick something like this one so we we actually have a solid connection here right so also the other end uh, is connected with with, uh, with this particular you know the, the other side but they are actually solidly connected and both of them have uh, an air gap between so that's what we uh, what i have shown uh, with this particular you know air gap here so now what we have we connect some something with that is one of the brushes here right because we want to connect it ultimately this whole this whole commutator ring is it, it it actually has to has to you know it has to rotate either in a clockwise direction or in an in an anti clockwise direction and we want to avoid the not only if we want to avoid the the twisting of the cable but we also want to avoid the we not only want to have avoid the, the twisting of the cable we also want to have uh, that particular you know uh, reversal of the polarity for for these two wires so what happens we want to have some sort of a thing that sticks with the surface of the of the of a particular you know uh, of the of a particular commutator segment so if for example if we have uh, let me let me mark it with some uh, with some line here let us say that we have uh, we have these two lines here as well as we have uh, we have two lines here let us see right so suppose that i am quite sure that you are able to identify we have these two lines available here right so we have uh, some uh, you know brush here let us say that this uh, that that particular you know uh, brush is uh, it is this brush. this this is the brush here so we we stick it somewhere here so as soon as we have uh, we have these two wires here because it always sticks with this particular surface so seamlessly it will move on to the next segment which is connected here uh, with this particular wire so that particular wire has now the polarity which is required and this particular arrangement is known as the is known as the bush 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 arrangement right so we have two things available here the first thing is the is these two which are the commutators right and the second thing that we have used uh, in, in 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 this particular you know set hook type of shape that is known as the brush these are the common brushes uh, carbon brushes available they stick with the with the surface of the commutator and they seamlessly they uh they transfer the uh, you know the, the connection from one coil to another coil so both of them actually uh, helps in 
in in in uh, in keeping this particular coil moving now one thing we should notice that what is the total torque which is induced in in this particular uh, you know set of a set of a coil what is the total torque here to find out the total torque here we should notice that this we have the induced forces only on the two conductors which is this ab and which is this cd so the total torque induced is equal to the torque induced in the segment ab plus the torque induced in the segment bc plus the torque induced in the segment cd plus the torque induced in the segment da out of them these two they do not have any torque induced because they do not have the proper orientation uh, with respect to the magnetic field lines so we only have the torque available here and that torque is equal to uh, and that torque we is dependent on the force that these two conductors are actually experiencing so we do know that this f is equal to i l into b uh, and we also know that this torque is equal to r f this sin theta uh, where this theta is the angle between this r and f and r is what it is a distance between the origin point to the maximum uh, you know uh, maximum uh, you know distance over which a connector is actually moving so because we we use a circular sort of a, of 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 a, you know structure over which this connector is actually mounted so therefore this r is roughly you can say that this is the radius of the motor from the origin point so with this in mind uh, we have this this tab that is equal to uh, that is equal to rf rf sin theta and with this with sin equal to 90 degree we have r what is this f f is equal to i l b and we have this sin 90 degree so we have this equals to r i l b and because you can see here uh, with this uh, north and this south the direction is in the counter clockwise so this is a counter clockwise direction similarly we also have the torque uh, for this uh, for this segment cd that is equal to r i l b and that is also counter clockwise so the net torque which is induced or which is experienced by this particular set of a coil is it, it is equal to 2 times r i l b right so uh, we should also notice here that this is only uh, applicable under the pole faces under the pole faces so if we go beyond the pole faces beyond the pole faces for example the connector is right now here it moves here and at this particular moment at this particular instant we have a connector here we have a connector here they are beyond the pole faces so at that time the total induced torque is equal to is equal to zero now uh, because we do know that the area is equal to pi r l and also the uh, flux density is dependent on the area into the magnetic field in, in density uh, b uh, we can say that this b that this ap is equal to equal to phi over b so sorry and this let me let me just write this b is equal to phi over ap so that is equal to uh, area is phi rl so that is phi over phi rl so if i substitute it in here then torque in u is equal to 2 rl b divided by uh, multiply by the if i substitute this b in here then this b is equal to this phi over phi rl so this rl cancels with this one so this torque induced is also equal to 2 times i uh, phi over phi so this is the under the pole phase right uh, again as we have discussed that this uh, induced torque should be equal to 0 uh, beyond the beyond the pole phase so what next we have the important point here is that this whole scheme which is actually rotating this this coil this particular part this whole part which is moving this moving part is commonly known as the rotor and for dc machines we have a special name we call it an armature right and the poles which are creating the magnetic field we call them the stator because they are not actually you know moving and they are uh, for the special name for uh, use in the dc machine we call them the we call them the field right so in practical machines as we will see uh, in the in the next lectures we will see that we have we have coils which are wound over these uh, particular magnets because these electromagnets and we have some separate scheme to energize these particular you know magnets to create a field inside that particular machine the here but uh, the point here is that instead of having in order to enhance the speed of the motor we may have multiple coils connected here such that uh, we have for instance we have the we have this particular uh, you know set of a pole 
if if we have this this is the if the, we have this is the first conductor then we may have another conductor which is which is aligned some like something like something like this one right so we, we may have a connector something like this one so we may have uh, you know uh, two con two connectors which are which are something like this one so when this pole when it rotates the, this particular connector comes in in front of the magnetic field lines and when we have another uh, you know possibility then this comes in front of the in front of the magnets which are the north and the south pole so this way the motor speed is actually uh, you know uh, it's, it's it's actually more uh, you know steady compared to the machine with only one uh, particular you know set of a coil also to enhance the uh, working of a motor this particular connector is not uh, is uh, made in this particular diamond shape uh, sorry this particular diamond shape and uh, this is this is the coil so we have this particular coil these are the two segments that are actually experiencing the force so for this uh, above uh, you know uh, explanation that we have done this is a this is b then this is b c then this is c and this is d instead of having uh, this single wire uh, in some more practical scenarios uh, what they do they actually create you know a wire that has multiple loops here something like this one right so that maximum you know conductors can actually interact with the with the magnetic field so uh, there are two important things that we uh, we want to you know we want to see the first thing is that the the scheme of the wiring for this armature is an important ingredient of uh, the topics on dc machines the second thing which is related to the to the north and the south pole of the electromagnet this is on the field winding it's not a big deal so we will spend the next lecture on the winding schemes of understanding the winding schemes and how they are actually uh, you know they actually happen on a real machine uh, that we will cover in the in the next class i hope that you have all understood this concept of this rotating coil uh, in a real uh, you know dc machine there are some very interesting uh, you know animations available on youtube i request you all to to hunt for them and see to have a better uh, you know visualization of uh, this uh, south pole this commutator and the brushes so due to uh, you know uh, some uh, limitations here i am not able to draw 100% clear diagrams but you know the, that particular deficiency is uh, is not a uh, is not an excuse as far as we have the videos available on the on the other channels so just go hunt for them explore those videos to understand the concepts of the of the winding their 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 uh, you know placement over a given uh, you know armature and the and the field settings so thereafter we will inshallah see, discuss most of the related topics inshallah in the next class so i thank you all take care allah hafiz